guys welcome to all of you on our channel that is CYES so friends in this video we will be discussing about the defense reforms in India so as you know friends that uh, uh, there are a lot of articles that come in newspaper about the reforms in defense sector so in this video what we will do we will basically highlight the important reforms which are much needed in our defense sector so that the, def uh, the operational preparedness of our forces is not compromised so let's start our discussion so before starting the discussion let me tell you friends that we have a website on which we daily upload important articles and their PDFs you can uh, visit that website to download uh, the, uh, very important articles for the purpose of CSE 2019 and also front for the purpose of CSE 2019 means we have a dedicated test series the uh, uh, you oh, and you can join that is test series the link is given uh, on your screen and we will also provide in the description box so for the purpose of UPSC CSC 2020 as well as uh, for the purpose of 2019 we have a different test series uh, the link of which will be provided in the description box so you can join them so let's start our discussion friends uh, the, uh, the the starting should be obviously by introduction so defense reforms as I have told you that uh, articles uh, come and uh, there, there is a lot of debate about the different different uh, different uh, aspects of defense reforms so uh, one we can basically broadly define uh, divide these defense reforms into two uh, broad uh, uh, we can say uh, two, uh, two broad parts one is we can say strategic uh, reforms and other is we can say your uh, uh, organizational reforms so uh, strategic reforms is basically to ensure that the, these the three services of the defense uh, uh, defense forces that is the air force navy and army they can be prepared to to uh, to main, maintain their operational efficiency effectiveness so that uh, any threat to the national security could be uh, could be effectively dealt with and the other reform is is that of the internal management of defense as an organization in itself so it is not the case that uh, we have to look look on these uh, is, uh, the, on these two reforms from separate angle so they are kind of intertwined in each other because uh, only if an organization is effectively functioning if it, it is efficient organizationally then only it can uh, it can discharge its uh, uh, duties uh, strategic duties we can we cannot say that uh, we must fulfill strategic uh, uh, reforms then uh, we can ignore the organizational reforms because both are related to each other so let's see that uh, what are the major reforms so this uh, video is basically about these reforms so first very important thing that is uh, is of the representation of defense officials so friends a uh, lot of articles come in newspaper and there is a debate that uh, there is an issue that uh, that is raised time and again that the representation of defense officials that is uh, defense officers in the in the Ministry of Defense is very small uh, because uh, there, there are a lot of civil servants uh, which are in the Ministry of Defense and uh, any issue that is raised by the defense officers uh, first reaches these civil servants and then uh, the, the file move moves uh, 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 towards the uh, we can say the Ministry uh, the Minister of the Minister of Defense uh, and in the in that context friends uh, uh, the issue is that there is no direct the direct contact between Minister and defense officers officials which is much needed because obviously the civil servants are, are generalists so they don't have that much idea of the need and the uh, we can say the aspirations of the defense forces so in, in that context there must be a proper representation of defense officers in the ministry of defense other important thing which has been raised time and again is the need of an integrated theater command so recently the uh, shikatkar committee submitted its report which talked about the creation of three integrated theater commands so what do you mean by integrated theater command so friends as of now our forces are divided into into three parts that is navy army and air force so each opera operates differently from the other so uh, though the coordination uh, uh, has has been ensured there are uh, sometimes the exercises that are that are conducted jointly by the three forces but uh, uh, there is a talk that there must be a proper uh, uh, we can say uh, uh, organizational or institutional setup in which the three forces must be merged so that they they can perform the their duties effectively and 
and in a in a coordinated manner uh, to uh, to achieve the desired goals in an efficient and effective manner so shakatkar community recommended three integrated theater commands that is Nord northern theater command western theater command and your southern theater command so it is not that uh, it is not the case that uh, army has to be dismantled for this purpose or air force has to be dismantled or navy has to be dismantled uh, the uh, the only thing that the shakatkar committee is suggesting that there must be at least an institutional setup of all these three forces operating in a coordinated manner so so that uh, uh, the results can be achieved when when there is there, the, when when the need arises because in today's war obviously friends uh, uh, the the war of today is obviously not uh, not conventional so obviously it will be a kind of a war in which the joint efforts of all three forces will be needed so it is better if we pre prepare in advance other important thing is uh, about the chief head for all three services so this is also an extension of the issue that is the need for an integration between the three forces so why it has been suggested because uh, it is felt that a chief will ensure uh, important coordination that must be needed in all these forces so it is not the case that it is this uh, this idea has been mooted now it was mooted way back in 2009 uh, 2001 after the kargil war when uh, you, you are uh, K. Subramaniam committee uh, in the aftermath of Kargil uh, chief uh, Kargil uh, 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 suggested that there must be a chief of tri services so that there is an interoperability between three forces but uh, uh, the main issue that has remained is that uh, one uh, whenever this issue has been raised uh, there always there will always start a uh, starts a turf war between among the three services as to which surface would be playing the leading role in this scenario other very important thing is of the need of specialized commands and uh, losing fat so what is what are, what do you mean by specialized command so friends to, uh, to, uh, today's uh, uh, we can say scenario to global scenario is that uh, there there are new new areas in, uh, of uh, we can say contestation which are emerging for example cyber cyber warfare then there is space warfare so uh, recently US president uh, 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 kind of we can say uh, uh, proposed that there must be a space for uh, force and also China is uh, looking for it and uh, also India is looking for it so there is there is a need for the specialized commands keeping in mind the uh, the recent uh, 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 areas in which the contestation is emerging so other very important thing in the de uh, defense forces that uh, if we consider the army then it is quite uh, it is quite bulky organization because as of now they uh, it, it employs 13 lakh uh, we can say uh, uh, Power. So uh, the, the 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 war of today, the modern warfare is technology based. It is increasingly turning towards the technology. So in that context, uh, uh, it is not necessary that we must maintain that much manpower because we have limited fund funds and we must uh, our forces must be agile. It, they must be quick and they must also be we can say better equipped so that uh, they can carry out the operations effectively so in that context there is a need to reduce the manpower and to channelize the, those funds which are now utilized for salaries pensions and other activities uh, to channelize those funds to the modernization of defense forces so this issue has been raised so other issues friends there are a lot of issues if we go into the detail then there are also specific issues like uh, we can say miscellaneous issues like corruption and lack of transparency in procurement process because uh, recent, it has been recently highlighted by Rafael controversy. Earlier also, whenever uh, a technology is bought from the foreign nation, the issue of corruption and transparency emerges, which unnecessarily delays your acquisition process, which, uh, uh, which adversely affects the modernization of forces. So this is a concern. And other important thing is that of indigenization of technology. So we are an emerging nation. So certainly we also must have to secure our borders. We have to ensure our national security and we have to ensure our uh, strategic interest in the global uh, world to ensure that uh, uh, to uh, to ensure that no no external threat is there uh, or for that matter internal threat is there for the rise of india but obviously when we are importing the technology from the foreign nation then our money is also going there and also they are not giving us the most advanced technology for that purpose it is necessary that indigenization must happen and then there are multiple issues in this indigenization to that why it is not taking place how should we promote it and what are the efforts that are taken by the government so uh, certainly as I have told you that it is very difficult uh, to cover all these aspects in a single video so about these aspects we will be making separate uh, videos uh, and uh, 
this this the, the purpose of this video is to just give you an uh, idea of uh, broad reforms that are talked about so then there is also a high system that is there in the indian army that is soldiers are attached to the officials for their day to day work so but but there has been a complaint that uh, there has been uh, instances when the when there is a complaint that uh, these soldiers who who are actually the combat uh, combat troops they are they are uh, uh, they are forced to do menial tasks for the uh, for the officer or for that matter uh, his or her family Be uh, and this creates a resentment in the force and other thing is the uh, social reform in the army uh, then uh, uh, here this issue has been about the induction of women for combat roles because recently uh, our uh, chief general bipin rawat uh, opined against it a few months back uh, but uh, this debate has also gained momentum that uh, but whether army as an institution must reflect the society's uh, uh, we can say uh, uh, society's goals and visions so there are other lot of other issues as well for example if you go into the air force then there is a issue of depleting squadron strength uh, the 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 stipulated squadron strength is 42 but now we have just 26 squadrons then there is a problem of hindustan aeronautics limited which is uh, which is operating very slowly and delivering projects very sl uh, slow and then there is issues in drdo so multiple issues are there so they cannot be covered in single video but the purpose of this video is to give you a general idea and that uh, that thing we have done in this video so if you have liked this video then do ensure that you share it with your friends and also ensure that uh, you subscribe to our channel and also you can visit our website for more uh, for more such articles that is www.achieveis.co.in and if you have any queries re regarding preparation if you want to subscribe to our courses you can uh, uh, mail us at achieveis21@gmail.com so thank you friends have a very nice day